Hello, cookbook friends. Welcome to the Cookbook Divas podcast, where we help you find your new favorite cookbook. I'm here with my co-host, Katie, and today we're bringing you all the best new cookbooks coming out in the first week of September 2021. It's going to be a great month in cookbook land. The closer we get to autumn, more and more cookbooks are being published. We have almost 25 new cookbooks to share with you today, so let's get started. I will jump in. I want to talk about All Day Baking, Savory, Not Sweet by Michael James and Pippa James. I'm so excited because I love baking, but I'm not always in the mood for something sweet. Mm Mm-hmm. This is the second cookbook by Michael James, who's a chef that works in Michelin restaurants. He features the pasties, or pasties, I should say, of his UK childhood, the pies he creates today for his family, and the quiches, sausage rolls, palmiers, and galettes that have earned him a cult following. The book also features tarts and preserves. It's structured throughout the course of a day and emphasizes minimizing waste as well as sustainability and seasonality. That is All Day Baking, Savory Not Sweet by Michael James and his wife, Pippa James. Cool. My book is Amber and Rye, A Baltic Food Journey. These are covering areas like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. This is by Azusa Zak or Zak. This cookbook explores the exciting area where the Baltic Sea connects Eastern Europe and Scandinavia. I've not heard of food around this place, so this sounds really cool. Me too. The recipes in this book are grounded in Baltic traditions, yet inspired by contemporary trends, making them modern and unique and easy to recreate at home. Yay! So, peeking inside, I see a recipe for spiced pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, Ooh, it's, it's that time of year. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's also a recipe for noodles with wild boar, semolina, fried sprats fish, and summer blueberry soup. Whoa, that's cool. That's definitely a seasonal cookbook, yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. So, that's Amber and Rye. This is by Susa Zach. I have a charming autumn cookbook up next. Apple Kitchen from Tree to Table, over 70 inspired recipes by Madeline Ankner and Florian Ankner. Did you know that there are more than 7,000 apple varieties grown in the UK and the US? Oh my God. Well, I knew that because I am from Wenatchee, Washington originally, where (laughs) they grow lots of apples. Yes. (laughs) Do you know the difference between heritage and new varieties and which ones work best in cooking? Actually, no, I don't. So I need this cookbook. Explore the fascinating world of apple growing and discover varieties you don't usually see in the supermarket, as well as popular favorites. Then delve into a delicious array of more than 70 recipes, in addition to crowd pleasers such as apple strudel, uh, baked apples, which I always forget to make and they're so easy, and tart to tan. You can whet your appetite with fresh menu ideas such as carrot and apple soup, apple filled tortellini, (gasps) ooh, yeah, and yum. Apple butter pumpkin pie? Oh, God, That's stop. That's Apple Kitchen by Madeline and Florian Ankner, and I have to buy it. Yes. Next up, I have another holiday-ish book. It's, well, it is definitely holidays. It's Baking for the Holidays. It's 50 Plus Treats for a Festive Season by Sarah Kiefer. We love Sarah Kiefer's cookbooks and are really looking forward to this one. This is a festive holiday baking book to celebrate this very, very special time of year. I'm hoping that 21, 2021 is different. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> Sarah Kiefer is author of 100 Cookies. She's the beloved baker behind the Vanilla Bean blog. And she's also the creator of the Bang the Pan method. I've not heard of Bang the Pan method. It just makes your cookies all squish looking, but then they're crunchy and soft at the same time. I don't know. I got to try it. Yeah, that sounds good. Plus, we can take out our, our, you know, anger on the pan. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, instead of the cookie. Uh, So this cookbook has 50 delicious recipes for seasonal brunches, cookie swaps, and all those awesome winter holidays. We can delight family and friends with edible gifts and whip up some delicious baked goods to treat yourself through the long winter months after the holidays have ended. Very important. Some recipes that are included are triple chocolate peppermint bark. Yum. Meyer lemon white chocolate scones. Pear almond Danish bread. Hot chocolate cake. Oh, what? 
I know. Sounds like oozing delicious cake. Ugh. There's also, of course, p- pumpkin pie, but this is with candied pepita streusel. Oh. So that's Baking for the Holidays by Sarah Kiefer. Here's the perfect cookbook for busy, or should I say lazy, cooks like me. It's called <laughs> Bare Minimum Dinners, Recipes and Strategies for Doing Less in the Kitchen oh, man. by Jenna Helwig, who's the food director at Real Simple Magazine. In Bare Min- Minimum Dinners, Jenna shares delicious, easy recipes so you can spend less time in the kitchen, yay, and more time enjoying your meal or doing whatever else you want. Like in my case, drinking wine and watching Netflix. Yeah! Chapters include bare minimum time, 30 minutes or less, bare minimum ingredients, seven ingredients or less, including the salt and olive oil, whoa, Hmm. bare minimum hands-on time, so slow cooker and instant pot meals, and I'm just about to get out my slow cooker and instant pot and give them back room on the counter, because it's the time of year I can use them. Yeah. She also offers bare minimum cleanup, one pot, sheet pan, and skillet meals. And bare minimum sides, such as super simple vegetables, salads, and grains. And you can feel good about serving healthy, well-rounded dinners. I need this cookbook. Sold. (laughs) That's Bare Minimum Dinners by Jenna Helwig. Next up, I have the Complete Italian Cookbook. It's 200 classic and contemporary Italian dishes made for the modern kitchen. This is by The Coastal Kitchen. When it comes time to make something special and seriously comforting... Italian is what pops up into my head, and I'm sure it's everybody else's mind, too. I could the, eat pasta every night if my scale would let me. <clears throat> I know, exactly. I'm just trying to stay away from it. Uh, the complete Italian cookbook is here to meet this considerable and constant demand, supplying cooks with over 200 simple, reliable recipes that enable them to tap into the culinary genius native to Italy. From silky bowls of noodles and inventive pizzas to decadent classics like lasagna and cannolis, you'll soon be tossing out your takeout menus and enjoying your best meals at home, just as the masters in the old country intended. We always forget that, you know, Italian food comes from Italy and normal people eat these amazing dishes. (laughs) So chapters include appetizers, salads and sides, sauces, Soups and stews, pasta, oh, fresh doughs and noodles, yes. And then we have pizza and focaccia, entrees and desserts. And I'm sure, so I'm sure I can substitute gluten-free flour into a lot of these recipes and make a lot of them gluten-free, like the pizza dough, the focaccia, even the noodles too. So that's really cool. That is the complete Italian cookbook by Coastal Kitchen. I really need this next cookbook. Because I know I waste too much food. I apparently am a carrot hoarder, I found out recently. But I don't eat up my carrots. But I buy them, and they're in my fridge. And then a month later, I'm like, ew. Or two months later when they go bad. Oh, my goodness. And I struggle with eating avocados and peaches before they rot. But when I buy them, they're so hard. (gasps) How? How? I'll eat them. (laughs) So this book is Cook More, Waste Less. Zero waste recipes to use up groceries tackle food scraps, and transform leftovers by Christine Tizard. Cook More, Waste Less offers accessible solutions to a problem every home cook faces, waste. From grocery shopping tips to pantry storage ideas, the book is packed with strategies to get the most out of our food, whether it's fresh or frozen, or the ingredients are a little bit past their prime, or leftovers. Written by food industry professional Christine Tizard or Tizard, who after seeing and cringing at the amount of wasted food during filming and photo shoots. Now, Katie and I do filming and photo shoots for our wine blog, but we're very good about making sure all the food gets eaten up by all of our friends later. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Like the fruit. Mm. Oh, God, yes. Uh, Christine knew that she had to share the every- everyday low waste hacks she uses in her own kitchen. So inside this cookbook, there's over 100 adaptable recipes to enjoy with lots of flexibility for substitutions. You can turn leftover broccoli and Swiss chard stems into a delicious au gratin. Use up your Parmesan rinds in a soothing broth. Make a mouth-watering pot roast, which is something I've never made as a vegetarian, but you can turn the leftovers into a savory pie or a beefy black lentil stew. If you have leftover rice, you can make rice pudding. Fruit going soft, anything can be a marmalade. That's Cook More, Waste Less by Christine Tizard or Tizard. Oh my god. 
There's so many things in this book I never thought of, like putting cheese rinds into broth. That's a really good idea. I wonder Super if it good. thickens it or I'm sure it flavors it. Oh, mm. Yeah, all of that sounds amazing. Smart, too. My next cookbook is called Desserts, <laughs> the ultimate cookbook by our favorite editors of Cider Mill Press, of course. The busiest uh, writers on the planet. <laughs> I know. They're insane. They're working 24-7, I'm sure. So inside, we have over 200 recipes, and that includes for things like cookies, cakes, pies, tarts, galettes, pastries, puddings, and custards, ice cream, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's amazing. My favorite part about this cookbook is that it offers a lot of keto gluten-free and vegan options too. So it's not being exclusive. And I know that dessert is one of those places where things can feel exclusive. So it's very inclusive. That is called That's Desserts, the ultimate cookbook by Cider Mill Press. I have yet another cookbook for busy or lazy cooks like me. Oh it's called Dinner Then Dessert, Satisfying Meals Using Only Three, Five, or Seven Ingredients by Sabrina Snyder. How do you make interesting and tasty meals for every member of the family? That question inspired former private chef and mom, Sabrina Snyder, to post practical, reliable, and taste-tested recipes to the blog she created, which is called Dinner Than Dessert. Mm -hmm. Sabrina knows that cooking delicious meals day after day can be a challenge, even for professional chefs. Well, yeah, especially if they've been cooking for work all day. Who wants oh, to come yeah. home and cook? <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> you add in picky eaters, dietary restrictions, a busy schedule, and children, and it feels easier to order takeout. <laughs> but cooking at home doesn't have to be difficult or boring. So inside this cookbook, you'll find flexible, fail-safe recipes, three, five, and seven ingredient meals, skillet mm. dinners, classic side dishes, slow cooker recipes, irresistible desserts, and more. Now, you guys know how important lovely photographs are to me because I'm always whining in my YouTube cookbook reviews <laughs> if there's not good photos. So I'm me glad too. to report. Yeah, this one has 100 color photos. Whoa! So some of the recipes include sausage and fennel pasta, salmon with plum sauce, garlic honey chicken. Bob would love that. Yeah. Easy breezy pot roast, sweet and spicy tilapia, roast pork loin, steak and potato hash, vegetable green curry, cilantro, lime, shrimp, and more. Oh, yeah. oh, they also have easy Mexican rice, rotisserie chicken potatoes, flavorful desserts like Nutella brownies, and a salted caramel chocolate tart. That was Dinner Then Dessert by Sabrina Snyder. Next on my list is Flavors of the Sun, the Sahadi's Guide to Understanding, Buying, and Using Middle Eastern Ingredients. This is by Christine Sahadi Welland. Sumac, Urfa pepper, halva, pomegranate molasses, preserved lemons. Oh my goodness. So I've always wanted to try preserved, preserved lemons. The seasonings. I have oh, three sorry. of those in my pantry, not all five. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's so many. So the seasonings, staples, spice blends used throughout Middle East, uh, Middle Eastern cooking offer delicious, simple ways to transform food. And this is what I struggle with, as you guys know from my YouTube videos. I'm always talking about how I want to learn Middle Eastern cooking. Uh, once you know how to use them, then it's going to be awesome. So in this cookbook, the people behind the iconic Brooklyn Market Sahadi's showcase the versatility of these ingredients in over 120 everyday dishes. That includes starters, soups, salads, friend family-friendly meals, and desserts. With sections devoted to recipes boasting bright, savory, spiced, nutty, and sweet accents, it offers inspiration techniques and intensely flavorful ways to use everything from Aleppo, Aleppo pepper to za'atar with confidence. This is something I need. Uh, throughout, no recipe recipes, quote unquote, help build up your flavor intuition so you can effortlessly incorporate any of the featured spices, condiments, and preserves into your daily repertoire. Inside, I'm really excited. This sounds really cool. So, but inside the recipes that they do provide that are beyond just the basics, we have a white chocolate cranberry cookie with sumac glaze. Oh my God, that sounds awesome. They have a Zatar Bloody Mary, Brooklyn nachos, and Harissa mac and cheese. Oh, so good. So that is Flavors of the Sun by Christine Sahadi Whalen. Next up, I have another food waste prevention cookbook. It's called Fridge Raid, which is what I did at midnight last night. I raided the <laughs> cheese drawer. Anyway, Ooh, yum. 
Fridge-Raid Flexible Kitchen Foraged Recipes for Low-Waste Meals by Megan Davies. Want to save time, money, and energy by using up your existing food stocks rather than constantly grocery shopping and then struggling to use up leftovers? Here, Megan Davies shows how by helping you develop intuition for using what you already have in your kitchen. She shares her vibrant, accessible, and most importantly, flexible recipes for kitchen forage meals that can be rustled up just by looking in the fridge or the store cupboard. Each recipe has highly inventive ingredients table showing how to swap and substitute ingredients depending on what you have on hand. I need that. Yeah. Because I'll be like, what do I do with these preserved lemons? (laughs) <laughs> Cooking this way is something that comes naturally to Megan, and she shares her secrets to equip you with the skills and tricks needed to make your own food go further, and the same time refreshing your weeknight meal roster. I need that because I'm stuck on, oh, Taco Tuesday, Pasta Wednesday, Pizza Thursday. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I get that. <laughs> she encourages you to enjoy some weekend feasting. I love the idea of weekend feasting. Me too. <laughs> that was Fridge Raid by Megan Davies. Next, I have a British cookbook. It's called From the Veg Patch, 10 Favorite Vegetables, 100 Simple and Delicious Recipes Everyone Will Love. This is by Kathy Slack. So here, Kathy Slack takes us through a year in her veg patch in the celebration of her 10 favorite things to grow and eat. I like this a lot. So that includes peas, lettuce, courgette. Is that how you say that? Courgettes, which are zucchini. Oh, yum. Beans. Fancy term. <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> French, yay. Uh, tomatoes, beetroot, squash, apples, kales, and leeks. Those are good. That's a solid 10, I would say. They're all simple to grow. They're affordable. They're readily available to anyone without a growing space of their own. Most recipes in this cookbook are definitely vegetarian, but some do use meat or fish. But every dish makes the vegetable the star of the plate. Uh, So this is food for everybody and for every day. Some of the recipes that they've offered here are pea, feta, and mint frittatas. Mm. To enjoy on a sweltering summer day, we have a tomato salad with anchovy breadcrumbs. That's interesting. And to warm you up as the nights start to draw in, as we see now, a pumpkin tikka masala. Ooh, Ooh. yum. And then to hunker down during wintertime coming very soon, uh, we have a leek and chestnut crumble. That sounds good. These are making me so excited for autumn. I can't wait to get back into my kitchen because it's been too hot to cook all summer. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I can't wait to see start eating comfort again, comfort food again. That's one of my favorites. So this is The Veg Patch by Kathy Slack. And my next book has a geek alert. I bring you The Geek's Cookbook. Easy recipes inspired by Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Star Wars, and more. It's by Liguori Lecomte. Katie and I are both admitted geeks. Yes. We're looking forward to this one. It includes dishes from TV shows, movies, and video games. It's packed with original and delicious recipes inspired by Zelda, The Walking Dead, which I just watched last night and it was so good and gross. (laughs) So I hope it's not a spaghetti recipe. Oh, God. Minecraft, Breaking Bad, The Matrix, Pokemon, Dexter. I'm kind of scared to see what they came up with for this one. (laughs) Lord of the Rings, Batman, and Final Fantasy. Wow. So some of the recipes include Sauron tarts. I wonder if it's an eye. (laughs) The eye of Sauron. Yeah. Uh, Matrix burger, Minecraft cookies, and meringue pokeballs. That was the Geek's Cookbook by Liguori Lecomte. I keep getting to share all the Italian cookbooks with you guys today. So my next one is Italian street food, recipes from Italy's bars and hidden laneways by Paola Bacchia. Hidden behind town squares, tucked down laneways, and away from the tourist trail, little-known eateries offer some of Italy's tastiest and best-kept secret dishes. Now I know. Now when I go there, I'll know. (laughs) So Italian street food delves into Italy's back streets to bring you simple and regional everyday recipes enjoyed by the locals. That's cool. Hmm. Whether it's a morning pastry, a lunchtime cristano, and wine, a late-night afternoon gelato, or a late-night snack of arancini, Italian street food brings a classic and much-loved cuisine into a whole new light. 
I wish I could go to a bar in Italy right now. That sounds so fun and stop for a real Italian gelato on the way home. Oh, I, know, I guess I'll right? just have to stop by a bar in my own town instead. <laughs> well. <Sorry. laughs> Any chance I get, right? <laughs> yes. Bar. Wait till you hear what's in this cookbook. We have chapters that include pizza and crostini, fried savory snacks. Oh, yum. Panini. We have fish and seafood. I know you wouldn't care for that. Or meat. But we also have breads and baked goods, sweet treats, ice creams, and sorbets. And then we go into sauces and basics. So that's the Italian Street Food by Paola Bacchia. I have a bit of a different cookbook for you up next. The Kitchen Whisperers, Cooking with the Wisdom of Our Friends by Dorothy Kalins. This is a beautifully written tribute to the people who teach us to cook and guide our hands in the kitchen by a founding editor of Savour magazine. The cooking lessons that stick with us are rarely the ones that we read in books or learn through blog posts or YouTube videos. They're the ones we pick up as we spend time with good cooks in the kitchen, like my grandmother, Marmo. Aww. Dorothy Kalins, the founding editor of Savour magazine. Did I do better? Savour. <laughs> I don't know. She calls the people who pass on their cooking wisdom her kitchen whisperers. Consciously or not, they help make us the cooks we are and help show the way to the kind of cooks we have the potential to become. For Dorothy, a lifetime of exposure to incredible cooks and chefs means that she can't enter her kitchen without hearing the voices of mentors and friends who she cooked over the years as they revealed their favorite techniques. For example... Marcella Hazan warns her against valuing look over flavor. Christopher Hirschheimer advises that sometimes water is the best liquid to add to a dish rather than stock or wine. What? Her one-time Southern mother-in-law wisely knows that not everyone who asks for a biscuit is food hungry. Woven through the text are dozens of narrative recipes from her mother's meatloaf to David Tannis's Swiss chard gratin. The Kitchen Whispers will prompt older readers to identify and cherish the food mentors in their own lives, just as it will inspire younger readers to seek them out. The author, again, is Dorothy Kalins. That's interesting. Next on my list is Life is What You Bake It, Recipe Stories and Inspiration to Bake Your Way to the Top. It's a baking book, obviously. This is by Valerie Lomas, the winner of the Great American Baking Show. I didn't know we had one of those, but now I do. So she shares her story of personal growth and more than 100 delicious recipes. Her recipes range from apple cider fritters to lemon honey mat madelines and crawfish hand pies to her grandma's million dollar cake. Ooh. Valerie shares heirloom family recipes from her native Louisiana, time spent in Paris, the Great American Baking Show, and, of course, sweets and breads inspired by her adopted hometown, New York City. Valerie's, quote, when life gives you lemons, make lemon curd, end quote, philosophy will empower legions of bakers and fans to find their inner warrior and bake their best life. That's really cute. Uh, chapters include morning treats, cobblers, pies and tarts, cakes, and fronts, cookies and bars, bread, and donuts, and other fried things. So that cookbook is Life is What You Bake It by Valerie Lomas. And now I'm hungry for donuts and other fried things, darn exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Next up is a vegan cookbook by a famous celebrity vegan. It's The Little Pine Cookbook, Modern Plant-Based Comfort by Moby, the musician and singer. He was the original owner of the LA celebrity hotspot Little Pine, which showcases an elevated menu, proving once and for all that vegan food is all grown up, and it should be the most delicious way to be eating today. Now Moby takes readers inside the special corner of Southern California with the Little Pine Cookbook, 125 recipes inspired by their restaurant's dishes. There's gateway recipes like panko-crusted piccata, veg-forward small plates like fried cauliflower with kimchi aioli. Oh, yeah. I should have eaten lunch before we recorded this I know, episode. I'm, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Go-to pastas like orecchiette with braised leeks, asparagus, and English peas. Oh, and didn't you know that desserts are healthier when they're vegan? Hmm. <laughs> Indulge in the simple pleasure of butterscotch pudding or the rich decadence of chocolate bread pudding while feeling good about yourself and your contribution to a better planet. So that was The Little Pine Cookbook by Moby. 
We have five more cookbooks to share with you, but we wanted to take a moment to encourage you to share our podcast with your friends who also enjoy cookbooks. We also want to invite you to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcast listening app. We'd love it if you'd leave us a review at Apple Podcasts and drop us a note on our Facebook page or via our blog comments. And don't forget to visit our YouTube channel for video cookbook look-throughs and reviews too. If you enjoy our cookbook reviews, please be sure to click like and comment so YouTube will show you more of our videos when you log in. So now I'm going to continue on. My next cookbook I wanted to share with you is Malibu Farm Sunrise to Sunset Simple Recipes All Day, a cookbook by Helen Henderson. Malibu Farm Sunrise to Sunset captures the carefree vibe of a beachside vacation with its simple and healthy farm-to-table recipes and gorgeous photography, showcasing the changing light throughout a perfect Southern California day. This cookbook brings laid-back beachy vibes to your kitchen, making it easy to start the day with surfers, rancheros, that's adorable, (laughs) uh, lounge at midday with FICA snacks, such as pumpkin chocolate bread pudding, and linger over magic hour meals like spaghetti spaghetti squash lasagna. It's an ode to unfussy home cooking from an author who truly gets it. Malibu Farms path to success is rooted in Helen Henderson's completely self-taught culinary skills and her simple Swedish sensibility. In essays interspersed throughout the book, Helen shares memories from growing up in Sweden, insights from the restaurant, and the joys of life by the water. With doable and nourishing recipes like avocado pasta with ricotta cream and the big apple salad with Brussels sprouts, Malibu Farm Sunrise to Sunset encourages you to create memorable meals that make every day a beach day, no matter where you are. So that was Malibu Farm Sunrise to Sunset by Helen Henderson. With autumn approaching, and we're super excited about yet another pie cookbook. And you can't own too many pie cookbooks. I don't think I can even count how many I own. Yeah, I think I probably have quite a few as well. (laughs) This one is Pie All the Time, Elevated Sweet and Savory Recipes for Every Occasion by Taylor Harbin. Whether you're craving a comforting favorite or an exciting new flavor, a celebratory indulgence or a quick treat, the answer is always pie. Taylor Harbin is the creator of the blog All Purpose Flower Child, (laughs) F-L-O-U-R, Child. She shares an outstanding variety of recipes that guarantee pie perfection. From no-fuss crowd-pleasers to achievable masterpieces. Ooh, I don't know. Her easy method produces a crisp, flaky crust every time, and her simple, unique fillings are effortless and delicious. So it's meant for beginners and seasoned bakers, and she has a fun, approachable directions, flavored crusts, and creative combinations, such as wild blackberry birthday pie, papa's golden pecan pie, beef bourguignon skillet pie, I just mispronounced that, and mocha coconut cream pie. She Mm -hmm. also has unique and inventive flavors like an Aperol citrus creamsicle pie. Oh, man. And a roasted cherry tomato Bloody Mary galette. Oh, my God. Anytime you want to put liquor in my pie, that is fine with me. (laughs) She also offers a Swedish cardamom roll hand pie. I am totally going to try baking that Bloody Mary galette, by the way. Oh, that's... I'm excited to see what that turns out to be like. (laughs) That was Pie All the Time by Taylor Harbin. Next up is Solo, The Joy of Cooking for One. This is by Signe Johansson. It is packed with advice for keeping a streamlined larder and tips for late night fridge foraging. Perfect for you, Carrie. (laughs) Yes, I'm a forager. Solo, The Joy of Cooking for One will inspire you to cook delicious food every day. Celebrating the joy of self-reliance and self-sufficiency, Signe Johansson, author of How to Huga, shares 80 fabulous recipes for happy solo cooking. This, of course, is beautifully photographed and designed. All of her cookbooks are. And there's a range of tasty and uncomplicated no-cook fast food and one-pot dishes to transform your daily routine. Signe shows how to make big batch recipes that you can reinvent and enjoy throughout the week. There's 
also a chapter with more adventurous recipes for when time is on your side. So potential weekends. Is time ever on my side? I, I was like thinking that. <laughs> Do I ever have that? So some of the chapters include light bites and things on toast. We have easy weeknight suppers, one pan wonders, make aheads, salads, mise, and tapas. Then we have simple pleasures, lazy weekends, and then finally sweet things. Again, that's Solo, The Joy of Cooking for One by Signe Johansson. My final cookbook for today is really goofy and silly, and I almost didn't include it, but it made me laugh. <laughs> it might make a nice gift for the adventurous teenage chef in your life. It's 3D Munchies, Three-Dimensional Recipes to Satisfy Them Cravings by Eli George. <laughs> Two-dimensional recipes? How passe. We're living in the 21st century, baby, and 3D Munchies is here to bring your late-night cravings to life. There's me raiding the fridge again. Anyway, <laughs> they say seeing is believing, and this book will let you visualize those super cheesy nachos, spicy wings, and gooey chocolate s'mores before they even hit the plate. Not to mention all the things you can do with the humble potato chip. Oh. From half-baked snacks to fully loaded pop-off-the-page carbs and a whole section for anyone chasing that sugar high, this book is here to satisfy all your senses with its over-the-top visuals and diet-unfriendly recipes. <laughs> So um, the artwork inside this cookbook is very colorful, like think hot pink and electric yellow and green. And it's oh, kind wow. of comic book-esque and kind of blurry. Oh but that's God. because the cookbook includes two sets of 3D glasses so you can read along with a friend. Oh, God. I think I'm out. For... That's... Yeah. <laughs> like, it's what if you crazy. lose them? <laughs> I know. I hope you can read the recipe with one eye closed, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that was 3D Munchies by Eli George. And my final cookbook is the Vegetable Cookbook for Vegans, 100 Fresh and Easy Plant-Based Recipes by Larissa Alksak. With the Vegetable Cookbook for Vegans, you can zest up mealtime with easy, healthy vegetable entrees and sides that maximize flavor without the need for dairy or eggs. I'm curious about that. Explore both traditional and new flavor combinations and use handy guides to learn the skills for boosting the taste and shelf life of your favorite produce. Inside this plant-based cookbook, you will find easy recipes from A to Z, so it's organized in alphabetical order by vegetable, plus each requires minimal prep and cook time, so they're, they're actually decent for weeknight meals. We also have vegetable overviews, so we get breakdowns for 50 different vegetables that include nutrition facts, seasonal information, and pairing options. There's also seasoning techniques offered in this. So we get to, you know, how we're going to enhance every vegetable's taste with vegan-friendly ingredients and spices, no meat or cheese, all that fun stuff, and important storage and meal prep tips. That's really helpful because I have a spice drawer full of spices and I'm not always sure what to do with them. Yeah, I have a lot of spices too. So that is the Vegetable Cookbook for Vegans by Larissa Olkzak. And that is a wrap-up for our favorite cookbook releases that come out in the first week of September 2021. Stay tuned on Fridays for our weekly cookbook roundup and tell your friend, your cooking friends, too, about our podcast. So for more cookbook content, make sure to check out our website at cookbookdivas.com. And we also have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. That's at Cookbook Divas. We also like to include some virtual free classes, so don't miss out on that. Those are coming up real soon. Thank you for listening, and have a lovely rest of your week.